So at the end of the last episode, we cleared a tier 2 dungeon and got this greater magic staff as a reward, which I think is completely useless to us as these big lizardmen guys cannot use magic, I don't think. Maybe there's something in the lizardmen temple that can let us use magic though, and we're about to enter it because we have 504 renown now. For clearing the tier 2 dungeon, we get 200 renown as a bonus to kind of reduce the grind. Also as an add-on bonus for clearing a tier 2 dungeon, we get 2 attribute and skill points, and that's going to allow us to get up to 9 iron flesh and 9 power strike. I think you can go to any lizardmen town and go to town activities, and I didn't actually you could buy a ship for 5k that's cool but we'll visit the temple of guardians you enter the temple and join other warriors who are training inside what would you like to do let's check out the items first and whoa that's a lot of armor 70 body 50 leg legs are gonna be just beefy after getting something like this oh it's 85k we're gonna need to clear a lot of dungeons or raid a lot of villages to be able to afford something like that shield of the mirrored pool when you first resist a spell in battle triple your max health and heal to full any further resisted spells will heal to full health total will remain after battle as an over percentage but default max health will revert back to normal how are you supposed to resist spells though i wonder i think there's a stat magic resist but i thought only dwarves get it blessed of the old one's hand seven body armor it's only one more body body armor the one I'm using. Blessed of the Old One's head, 80 head armor. Venom of Firefly, Frog, Javelin. Requires two power throw. 50% chance of double damage. 50% chance of triple damage. All enemies aside from undead, demons, and we don't know the last one. Yeah, it only has 10 charges. I don't know how useful that is. Blade of Revered Tezunki, plus 20% base damage. Seems kind of low though overall. Doesn't seem that good. Revered Spear of Tlanxla. It's got a lot of reach. Interesting pull arm. We don't have much pull arm skill though. Scimitar of the Sun resplendent 120 speed okay we need that like almost certainly before we get that though i want to see what abilities are in the next menu so let's just look at the amulet of itzel 114,000 buying price but we can activate it in the camp menu to gain plus two protective save against all damage so there's four plus five plus and six plus ward saves and i think the lower is better so i think this is a really powerful ward save but once it blocks damage it says the amulet dies until itzel reactivates its power so i'm guessing you can only block something every so often i don't know how often that is but yeah the main thing I'm looking at is this one-hander. I just want to be able to slice through enemies. This is the cutlass I'm using, which is 102 speed, 109 reach. And we got that off of Eleanor. That's the fastest slash longest weapon I've seen so far. Well, in this playthrough at least. But yeah, let's learn a new skill. I wonder if I can click them and see what they do. I save first, so just in case we can't. Oh wow, 100,000 gold. Divine Protector blesses us with a protective slime that will help us regenerate during battle. Wow, that's amazing. I don't know how many skills you can learn, but that seems like that would be the best one. Your spotting will always be 10. Uh, who cares about that? We have eight spotting. Although if we have spotting 10 in our main character, it will boost up to like 13, I think, because the game gives you bonuses for investing party skills on your main character. But yeah, I'm going to assume that we can only get one blessing, so we're going to not go for that. Gives us 4 plus magic resist. This is going to be really powerful for higher tier dungeons because there's going to be a lot of casters, but I still think the regen's better. Gain 4 riding, max 10. So you should technically be able to buy this multiple times, right? Unless maybe you can only buy it once and then it caps your riding out at 10. So like even if you had 7 riding before you bought it, it wouldn't get you to 11 basically. We got to assume that's what it means, so we're not going to do it at this time. And then blessing of Chotek. Pathfinding will always be 10. That's more useful. So that should boost us up to like 13 pathfinding but it's only in lizard realm which we don't care about that too much so yeah we're gonna save for this blessing that gives us regen during battle it's 100k and for now we're just gonna buy this scimitar of sun resplendence how about this pole arm too we could give this to one of our companions so for now i'm gonna use a pole arm for myself and look at how freaking long this thing is it is massive oh and then this blade's on fire that's pretty sick I also just want to show you guys that there's a potion seller here. And basically, these are just not that rare. I come across them all the time in Lizardman Towns. And yeah, it's plus three healing potions and plus two potions of knowledge. And that's 2,000 XP, which was enough for another level up. I'm not really sure what I want to invest to next. Like, we got Iron Flesh and Power Strike maxed out. And when we get 30 strength, we'll put more points in that. Prisoner management and leadership's also maxed out, as is inventory management. We could start putting points in a trainer. I guess we have two. We must have started with that. Or like, we could start putting points in a writing. We get that up to three before we buy the increased writing skill. Let's do one more point in training. Trainer, so we can start training up the lower companions and let's put some points in our polar and proficiency so we'll be better at using the two-hander that we just got i did quick sweep through all the lizardman towns and that two out of three of them are actually potion sellers so we can buy three more healing potions plus two more potions of knowledge and extorting this caravan outside of itza actually gave us 1486 gold which covered the cost of all those potions i did drink them and it wasn't even enough for a level up so it is taking quite a bit of xp to get to the next level now and this is where the game becomes really grindy but thankfully if we do dungeons we can get the extra attribute 
and skill points, which is going to allow us a little bit of wiggle room for the build. We don't have to go like some super meta build. I would like to farm that 100k, so I wonder if we should just raid villages until we can get that 100k. Maybe I'll just fast forward through the raiding process if no lord stop us, like we did not get stopped just now. We're kind of out of inventory space though, I will say. Yeah, we can't even take that much stuff because all these healing potions, well, we have a bunch of other crap in here too that we don't need necessarily. Potion of curing, we don't really need. Potion of disguise is cool. We should use this right now actually to sneak into one of the orc towns or the undead towns. And yeah, I drank the potion of disguise, so we should be able to sneak into Casa Bar. And then we were able to, we can check out the tavern. There's Darius the Apprentice here, but... Okay, of course there's a... Of course, dude. When we don't have our... Oh. Wait, can I do healing potion? No, I can't. Oh, that was clutch. Just lost all my HP though. Such a waste to lose all my HP on that. Of course, there's a drunken dude though. The only time I don't own my armor, that would be the case. Darius the Apprentice though, will show us his stuff. Wait, what? He wouldn't before, or maybe it was the other guy. There's two of these special vendors, and in order to access one of their inventories, you have to win 10 tournaments. 140 speed on this sword, holy cow. That's insanely fast. That's quicker than my weapon. It's better than this weapon, actually. You know, there's a lot of weapons here. Sword of Striking, wait, is there two of them? Yeah, there is. Should probably buy one of those for a companion. I don't really know if I want to go through all this stuff. You can get it from dungeons, so I was thinking instead of winning the tournaments, we just try to get this stuff from dungeons, but maybe we can afford some of the cheaper stuff, like this thing gives Gives plus one power strike doesn't give that much damage though 147 speed on this axe bonus against shields whoa it's only 1500 so far this transaction is costing us 10k gold we have a lot of stuff that we can sell so let's just get rid of everything and let's see how much money we can let's sell this greater magic staff i'm almost certain it has no purpose for this playthrough i don't think this guy can use magic and i don't think companions can either sarich's yumi has really fast speed and accuracy it's only 2000 why is it so cheap we'll grab that for our arch companion though on this two-hander is insanely fast 150 speed. We should get that for someone. When he has this rune musket of reloading for 13k, seems like that is something we would want. That's 25k though, but we could sell some of these chest pieces. We don't currently have an orc or skeleton companion, so we sell both of these. That's going to be just a perfect amount actually. I did look on the wiki and Darius the Apprentice is the merchant with the lowest grade of equipment to sell and he does not have any requirements, so he's like the cheap guy. I guess there's way better stuff on the dude that requires you to win 10 tournaments. So I gave the bow over to Scarlock the Wanderer who has 380 archery, 8 power draw, and here's his current loadout, the bow we just picked up. Plus I gave him over this blood axe, which gives him plus 20% base damage. And I don't know if this gives him more range weapon damage, but it should be a good fallback weapon regardless. And as for his armor, we just gave him over the best stuff that we have for human. This vampire hell armor gives him a ton of protection. This headpiece is an undead one, but humans can wear it as well. And these brawn mittens. We're going to bring him in a dungeon with Eleanor, who has 250 firearms. And she has someone two-handed as well. So I gave her over this revenge, which has really fast speed. And she can use this as kind of a fallback back weapon her main weapon is the rune musket which is quite a bit of damage and she does have 250 range weapon proficiency so that should be pretty good on her i'm wondering if actually i should use it because even though i have zero in firearms i could avoid enemy range fire we also gave her over to the best human gear set we have which is this blood knight helm tons of head armor she's got this chest plate which gives her a good amount of body armor some pretty average legs and then these gloves six body armor so we're gonna bring her in scarlet the wanderer the bowman and then a paladin into a medium dungeon and it's gonna be a tier three dungeon this time which is gonna be harder there's gonna be more casters and i just want to try this out even though i don't have the most hopes for it although this is a really good layout for us i think yeah we're getting shots off this is really good maybe this reminds me of the lord of the rings scene where you got the goblins shooting at you and then you got the uh bowmen i don't know if they're gonna be like successful at uh beating them but i just gotta make sure nice we already got a kill I'm gonna make sure that i have people in the right groups because I'm doing something with groups now where I'm trying to keep our paladin back and not have him go into the fighting. So I'm keeping him in this group called safe, I think. Maybe he's not in the safe group though. Maybe he's in the shield group. Oh, and you guys gotta... Uh, I forget what group they're in. I'm low actually, I just realized. Maybe I should use the healing potion. Okay, just let me get in there. I should probably just use a healing potion right away. I think about it. Oh, this thing freaking swings so fast. Can feel the power. What this guy's doing? Reinforcements have arrived for the enemy because we're firing guns too much, I guess. I think there they are over there. Yeah, they're firing at us, but I don't think they're that accurate. We have really good armor too. Scarlet the Wanderer's got hit a few times, I can tell, just by 
you know how he's looking this is like the best loadout though for the first uh dungeon with our you know layout that we have i cannot ask for a better one i don't know who's in what group by the way i don't know if like i'm choosing the wrong group or oh, wait, pull back everyone pull back i don't think they fall they're like i don't think they're reacting to my you know orders here because i'm telling them to follow me they're not following me I want you guys to pull back. I told them to come back to here, and they're not coming. Okay. Well, whatever happens, happens, I guess. They're out of arrows, it looks like. Yeah, I think we're pretty much screwed here. I don't know if our companions will heal. Scarlet the Wonder got knocked out. Whatever. We'll just take the chest, and we'll just get out of here. I just want to try a dungeon. Eleanor got knocked out as well. Yeah, this is not a good <laughs> layout, actually, because the enemy just seems like they have better arrow fire. Well, let's use a healing potion. I also couldn't really command them there. Like, they were not listening. I swear I was giving them better commands than, you know, what they were doing. I was telling them to line of sight, but they were not listening. Gotta level up. More point of strength. More point of shield, maybe, than athletics or riding. Some more pull arms, too. I was trying to use that pull arm earlier, but I just couldn't figure out how to. I guess it stabs only. 26 damage. Not great, not terrible. 13. Oh. This thing just freaking cuts though. But yeah, so we're not gonna get far here. The main purpose was just to test out those companions and they're not gonna be with us for the next dungeon. I did also wanna start using healing potions too because they're taking up half my inventory space. So we entered from up there and I've seen the chest spawn on one of these two towers, I think, but it was hidden back here behind this pillar thing and it's right over here. As far as the loot, only four things. The higher tier dungeon you go, I think you get chances for more loot. Skaven War Sword, not bad, I guess. And some sturdy hides. Loot wasn't really crazy, but yeah, with that, I think we're just gonna get out of here. I don't wanna lose the Paladin, and two of our companions are already knocked out. And Scarlet the Wanderer is currently 1% health, so we have way less movement speed because we lose all of his pathfinding, I think. So yeah, we're gonna have to wait for him to heal up before we can really outrun Lords. In the meantime, though, we will be pillaging villages, and we're gonna try to farm up that 100k. Fine spice here, that was 60. And that one village is going to be about 6.4k gold. We are quite a ways to that 100k and we are probably going to keep getting derailed like there's a skink priest here and I always like to buy casters just because they're really useful in regular battles. Not so much dungeons because in dungeons you get way less mana regeneration so it takes quite a while for them to start casting and it's really hit or miss if they actually cast anything useful. We raided the village of Mozig and a lord actually just passed by. Uh, we got our weekly budget so we're losing 5.6k from our party wages but our dad works are giving us a pretty good amount of money back it said they were both about 1800 but the prices do fluctuate so we're not really gaining money with our weekly budget but we're not losing too much at least with our enterprise investment we raided the village of mozig we extorted this caravan for like 1500 gold we'll go extort this one too and i'll show you guys how much gold we get for doing that they are trying to run but scarlock did regenerate back to above i think it's like 20 percent and now we get our path funding back so we can chase them down easy there's a toll 1500 dinars because we have a really powerful party size we don't even have that many units but we have some really powerful units in our party they're all really high tier oh and we got another skaven caravan over here that's another 1500 and yeah it does pay to be at war with everyone you can really profit by having no allegiances but yeah we'll dump off all this stuff from the village we just raided also shout out to the comment section if you do get cattle from raiding villages you can sell them to the guild master for quite a bit seven cattle for 1800 so in this lizardman town we found augie bozzy Waxkin, which i believe is a good healer yeah he has four wound treatment three surgery and four first aid and he starts out really low level so it's really easy to level him up he doesn't like bjorg which is a really good companion that we're gonna get later but if he dislikes bjorg but then we get someone that he likes in our party and then we get someone that bjorg likes in our party we might be able to keep them both at this tavern there's also four of the 300 gold randomly generated companions and what we can do with these guys is if they have bad stats we can just strip them and sell their gear for probably more than 300 or about the same price like this dude Tukax has a ton of charisma and leadership so he would make for a good lord I guess but his combat stats just aren't that great so I think we're just gonna let him go and this dude Screets also has a ton of charisma but well he has three weapon master it's not terribly bad I guess five inventory management though it seems like his skill points are kind of wasted and yeah the source is gear sells for 549 so if you strip them you actually get a better profit sometimes I'm not sure how much the Skaven's gear sells for but the giant rat's worth the 300 gold as for the elf that was in the tavern he starts with 14 strength which is actually the highest I've seen I think on these random companions and then the undead looks 
pretty bad overall. So we raided two more villages and Gotrek is now content. He was at 60 just now, which was weary. And if he gets to like 50, I think he can leave. So we need to chill out on raiding villages. He is almost healed back up to full though. So we're gonna do a dungeon with him. And I gave him one of the really fast one-handers. I gave him back his two-hander as well, which was a mistake, I think. His two-hander is good, but I should not uh, let him use a two-hander because he doesn't by default try to block range attacks, so he ends up taking a lot of damage. I think there's a way to micro it, but it's pretty difficult. Uh, I don't know if this guy's a caster, by the way. Oh, it's too much damage. But yeah, I should have taken his two-hander away from him. We'll see how well we can do, though. Is that guy part of our group? It's Eleanor. Why is Eleanor in here? I did not want to bring her in here. I swear I selected Paladin. I'll, like, go back to it. You're not aware of me, I guess? Which is fine. I have no idea what Eleanor is here, though. This is a throw. She's throwing hard by taking up her Paladin slot. She does have a really fast two-hander. But yeah, okay, we back out of this actually. Here's the weapon I gave to Gotrek, 140 speed. I took away his axe, I'm feeling more confident about it. I did take a little bit of damage, but I checked Gotrek's HP and he's 100%, which I don't even think he was 100% when we entered the dungeon. So I'm not sure what's up with that, but uh, yeah, let's let these guys come to us. I have the gun as well on me. I took Eleanor's gun. It's a really, yo, hello, team? Nice stab on that thing, it's like one shot. But yeah, I took her runic rifle, and I'm not gonna be that accurate with it, but it's 73 damage, not bad. Good damage there. I think reload's pretty fast too for a gun. Usually these take a while. Nope. We have a lot of rounds, so it's only a matter of time before I hit him. Beer all day, there we go. I'm always tempted to just run for the exit here. But there is a chest somewhere, so we're just going to look for the chest. Because the exit is right there, but I think we've killed everyone actually. Oh, never mind, we have not. Do we go for these guys or the chest? I think we, uh, or the exit, I mean. Let's, let's kill these guys and let's uh, get the chest. There's more guys down here. Oh, one damage. So the entrance I think is that door, then you go down this long corridor, and the exit's that way. But if we go down this one, there is a chest over there. I think what would be a really cool mechanic is if you clear out all the enemies, the chest would just spawn at the end. Well, I'm not sure how doable that would be, but battered pirate coat for, I guess, undead, because it's got the undead legs. Reinforced assassin armor, 26k, because the reinforced modifier, I guess. The armor itself is not that good, even, witch band. I mean, it's good, but for a 26k armor piece, it's not that great. Yeah, this dungeon is short, so it should only be like four rooms, potentially, but it is going to be hard because... These guys actually have no idea we're here. It's nice. Let's just go for these guys first. Clear them out is... Oh, I've got casters going on. I'm just gonna heal. This guy's a caster. Blocked it. Oh man. Blocked it. Man. He's got a ward save, I think. These shamans are beastly. 500 XP for that. A lot of enemies up here. We should pull back. Pull way back. They're kind of uh, blocking me though. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have time to pull back now. Mm, oh, we can. Some of them are actually running away. That's good. I'm just worried that like people are going to be... Yeah, there's bowmen back there. I'm going to try to block the bowmen. Just got to get in here and start blocking shots. Do not let them cast. 
or do any bow stuff. That's the main thing, I think. Because while we're swinging, people are uh, shooting at us, basically. No one's down yet, which is good. Ah, I see the chest. So the entrance room is right here. I think you spawn in from here. And the chest is right next to the entrance, which is kind of weird. Pretty crappy sword. An okay chest piece that we can give to our or keeler. And a pretty fast dagger. Alrighty, next dungeon. This is number three, I think, if I can count properly. Big units get stuck here. That's why I'm not bringing in some of the bigger dudes that we have. They get stuck on a lot of these, and they are completely useless. And they're not even that good, because they don't have any shields. Like, none of the big units, I think, have shields. Well, they do have a lot of base armor. So don't know if we want to use guns, because it can draw the attention of others. At least me vulnerable to gunfire. Yeah, it's coming closer. I will not hurt you. Just want to say hello. Good. Yes, fill your destiny. He could not see me, but I could see him. Same with this guy. Oh. Right, and nuts. So this room's looking pretty empty. I'm just gonna have everyone follow me. And the exit is over here somewhere. Could just run to the exit and just avoid the chest. Whoa. Seen a caster over there maybe or somebody shooting something. Uh, maybe we just run to the exit, honestly. I kind of just want to get the tier 3 reward. And there's one more thing I want to get done this episode. This is the exit right here. Let's just go to the exit, next dungeon. Screw the chest. We've been getting pretty unlucky with chests anyways, but uh... Oh man, this one's massive and they have AoE. This is bad. Very bad. I think we might be screwed here, potentially. I'm just gonna block and then try to soak the AoE damage myself. Telling them to pull back, but they're not listening. They do this sometimes. I'm trying to pull them back here, hold that position. And then I want to just, okay, you guys are not listening to me, I don't know what you're doing. But I want them to throw their skulls on me. Which it looks like, they can't throw right now because these guys are in the way. Oh, crap. There's a skull thrower, that's what I need to find. Pull back a little bit. Ugh, they're kind of grouped up, I don't like this. Okay, you guys are being idiots, dude. I told them to pull back and there's not. Where's the skull thrower at? I think he's actually behind me? I don't know. Oh, the Scar Veteran, or... I think it's Scar Veteran. He's like 1v5 right now. Seems like... If we win this, he might die, but... I don't know where one of our dudes is. We're missing a dude. And that guy over there is just... He's owning, I guess. Okay, I don't know what happened to the skull thrower, by the way. He only threw like one skull, and then, yeah, that's it. This might be the end of the dungeon, too, which would be really nice, because, yeah, there's one more thing I want to get done this episode, but it could be a really fast one. Short, sweet, and to the point. Here's our paladin, by the way. He got scared. Skeletons are scary, even to a mighty paladin. Oh, here's the chest. It's right next to the entrance yet again. So we spawn in like right here, I think, and then the chest is right there. Thick shield. It's a pretty good shield. It's got more resist than mine, but not as much size. Oh, this one's freaking huge. That is more what I'm talking about. There's no way gunfire is going to get past that. And then a Nurgle champion helm, which is pretty good. There's a companion we can give this to later, I believe. It's really good, and I don't think he comes with a helmet. But yeah, this shield is freaking massive. Look at this thing. It can block any type of gunfire, I think. Except for cannons. We can block cannons. But yeah, we exit the dungeon. Nice. Quick episode. I love it. And as far as loot, crude executioner helm. I'm not sure what race that's for. It looks like it might be a dwarven helmet. Rusty dark elf saber. Cur bully. Decent chest piece. Chaos plane robe. Pretty bad. Realm plate armor. Decent. And then as for the special item, chaos rune sword. I actually could have bought this for, I think, 9k from the magic vendor. I didn't think it was that good though because you gain two one-handed proficiency every time you defeat an enemy lord in combat. And how often is that going to 
zombie. Like, probably not that often. I have to seek out enemy lords in combat, and that would be very hard to do, I think. That part of it's kind of useless, but the 20% base damage and then the speed and reach are actually pretty good. We'll give it over to one of our companions. It's a one-hander. And yeah, ordinarily I would end the episode there, but there's one more thing I want to do. At the very start of the episode, we got this quest, Destroy Chaos Dwarf Sorcerer Talgrim on the island of Albion, which is kind of across the map, but I want to go try to do that. Or we could maybe do that at the start of the next episode, and I'll just make this kind of a quick one, and then I'll just start recording the next one immediately. Yeah, I think let's do that, and that'll be the focus of the next episode and getting the tier 4 dungeon done.